Hey, Mini War Gamers. Welcome to the first episode of my new show, uh, which I call The Machine Shop. Uh, so who am I? Uh, I'm Ash. You may have seen me in some videos. Um, making the War Machine League Season 3, a uh, series called Ash Reps, where I kind of play everything and anything. Um, and another series um, called the War Machine Narrative Campaign. Um, so what am I doing here? Well, Matt and Dave hired me back in July, primarily to make War Machine Battle Reports. Um, and since then, I've been working on that. A new series called Old World Wars for Warhammer. Um, and some various other bits and pieces of Infinity stuff. Uh, and that's really probably at this point when you're watching this video what you've seen me been doing, or what I've been doing. Uh, so, yeah, but who am I outside of those battle reports? Well, uh, I am a um, veteran of a miniature gaming company you might have heard of called Games Workshop. Uh, I worked there for 13 years. Some of you watching this video might remember me from the Canadian business. Uh, I worked in a variety of positions here up until the office closed in 2008, uh, at which point I worked solo for about two years, uh, running the eastern arm of the Canadian business from Windsor, Ontario to Halifax. Uh, if you know me from those days, hey, how are you? <laughs> it's good to see you all again. Um, and then in 2010, when they amalgamated, they closed the Baltimore office, which the North American business was being run out of at the time. Um, I relocated down to Memphis, and I spent four years traveling across North America um, as one of a small group of retail sales directors running the North American retail chain. Um, in 2014, uh, there was a restructure, and I ended up coming back to Canada, which was good timing really for us. My family, uh, we just had uh, my daughter, my first child, um, and although she's born in the U.S., of course, um, Canadians can be born anywhere as long as their parents are Native Canadians, they're considered Canadian citizens, so we relocated back up here um, to the Niagara area, and that's where I ended up meeting Matt randomly as he was looking for Infinity players. Um, came and played some games, and back in July they offered me a job doing video production. Um, so here I am. Uh, so yeah, I've got a whole bunch of experience um, sort of inside the industry, having met a lot of people who work in miniature game companies, um, a lot of experience with the cottage industry uh, that has grown up around miniature games. When I say cottage industry, what I mean is those small companies that might produce a niche of a niche. So if miniature wargaming is a niche industry, then um, if you produce bases or if you produce uh, things like shoulder pads or heads or accessories, templates, measuring devices, then you're a, you're a cottage industry. You're a, you're a niche within a niche. Um, of accessories for a niche business. Uh, so I've met tons of those people through conventions, um, things like the Gamma Trade Show, um, just all of the many different conventions that happen across North America about miniature wargaming. Um, and I have a lot of experience with the history of wargaming too. I've been wargaming for a long time. Um, I discovered Citadel miniatures um, and Ralph Partha miniatures in 1988. So I guess that's 26 years now. <laughs> um, actually discovered them in a friend's older brother's uh, room, a uh, guy I was in Cubs with, I was a Cub Scout. Um, his older brother had just shelves and shelves and shelves of miniatures, um, which I was fascinated by and then realized that they were actually advertised in these books I was reading called Fighting Fantasy Novels. There's those green spine choose your own adventure books. You might remember them from being a kid. Um, but they were actually written by Ian Livingston and Steve Jackson, who are the founders of Games Workshop. Not the modern Games Workshop that you know today, um, but they are the ones who founded White Dwarf um, way back in the day. Actually, I brought an example of a Livingston and Jackson era White Dwarf. This is White Dwarf number 40. You can see some kind of familiar artists on there. Um, and this was back when White Dwarf Magazine was primarily about uh, Dungeons and Dragons board games uh, and all the stuff that Games Workshop was importing into England at the time. Um, that's how I discovered Games Workshop, Citadel Miniatures. Well, it was Citadel Miniatures and Games Workshop. There were two separate entities still at the time. Um, and since then, I've probably played every miniature game under the sun. So I've played uh, tons of miniature games that no longer exist as a huge fan of uh, Void in the early 2000s, late, 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 late 90s, early 2000s, before I-Core unfortunately went under. It's changed hands a bunch of times, but I still have all of my Kev White 
um, Void Miniatures, uh, just because I will collect pretty much any Kev White miniature because he's a fantastic sculptor. Hey, Kevin Sally, you're fantastic. Um, tons of uh, Heartbreaker miniatures for games like Chronopia and um, Warzone back in the 90s. They're big competitors. Uh, well, at the time, they were closest competitors probably to Games Workshop in terms of just the miniature line that they owned and the IP they're producing. Um, and then lots of weird little miniature games that don't exist anymore. I played a miniature game called Cells 1999, which was a weird Angels vs. Demons game. If any of you guys remember that, um, up through until today's miniature game. So I started playing War Machine in 2003 when the box sets were released at Gen Con. Um, I played all of the Rackham games, loved Confrontations 1 through 3, and of course Dogs of War in 3.5. Fantastic games, beautiful miniatures. Sad that the company imploded. Um, even the pre-painted game AT43, whose miniatures I still use, by the way, because they're fantastic miniatures. Uh, I've used them for tons of different cottage industry rule sets, which is something I want to talk about in a later episode. Um, cottage industry gaming and rule sets with no miniatures. Uh, and of course, Games Workshop games, all the specialist games, um, Warhammer, Warhammer 40K. Uh, I've played them since time immemorial. Um, so yeah, so I, I pretty much play every miniature game under the sun, and that was one of the things Matt and Dave said to me when they hired me. They were like, well, you could really just do anything, so come do this for us now, and uh, we'll see what happens in the future with you making battle reports and your own content and stuff. So this is my first stop making my own content, this machine shop um, show, and really, well, I guess that's the next question I was going to try and answer for you guys, is what's it going to be about? So the machine shop, what's it going to be about? Um, <laughs> it's going to be about miniature wargaming. Yeah, it's going to do what it says in the tin and be about miniature wargaming. But that being said, it's going to be about miniature wargaming from the point of view of me. Um, and I am something of an amateur historian and anthropologist for miniature wargames. So what does that mean? Um, it means I'm interested in wargaming in general. Uh, I don't really believe personally that there's such a thing as uh, a good or bad war game. Um, I think that all war games are pretty much as good as the people you play them against, uh, which tends to be my experience with most things in life. If you're doing it with people that you enjoy doing things with, then whatever your hobby is, it's probably awesome. Um, I want to talk about that in the show. Uh, and when I say anthropologist, uh, less talking about war games and more talking about war gamers. Because I think that's a big component. Those are two separate things. War games are things that exist separately from the people that play them. They are rule sets, they're set in stone usually in a book somewhere, they're not made up as you go along, uh, unless you're playing G.I. Joe's in your sandbox, which I did tons of when I was a kid. Um, but they are, they are simply an environment in which to enjoy a game um, with toy soldiers, typically. Uh, and I have a whole big thing that I do, I talk about with the history of Wargaming, or we can talk about that. But Wargamers are separate. Um, and Wargamers are a, a very niche group of people who really enjoy playing tabletop strategy games um, as they are sort of currently popularly defined. Um, and I want to talk about that too, because I think there's a lot of interesting things to talk about there. Uh, Wargamers are a very, in my experience, diverse bunch. I've met thousands and thousands of them um, through just through traveling across North America and the world working for Games Workshop. Uh, and they have a lot of stuff in common. <laughs> so there's a lot of things that Wargamers have that all, is almost identical uh, from country to country, person to person. Um, and then they have a lot of things that make them different. And so I think that's interesting to talk about. That's what the Machine Shop is going to be about. Um, it's going to be about talking about Wargames, Wargamers. Probably not a specific Wargame. I'm probably going to talk a lot about War Machine right now. Because uh, that's really the main thing I've been working on for the last few months is I've been doing the War Machine League uh, and interacting with a ton of War Machine gamers. And that's after about a four-year lapse not playing War Machine. When I was living in Tennessee, there was very few people playing War Machine out there. Um, very few people playing any miniature war games out there, really. Uh, so it, it, it was about four years between me packing up my Manoth army and then unpacking my Manoth army and playing games in this league. Um, and what's fascinating is during that four years what's happened. So I think that's something I'd like to talk about in the show. So you're probably going to hear a whole bunch about War Machine um, and then War Games and War Gamers, which I think are two really separate topics. Of course, they're all obviously joined together, but they're two separate things that we could examine and explore and talk about. So I think that's going to be really neat. 
Um, so yeah, so that's that's what the machine shop is going to be about. I'm going to talk a little bit. I guess the third thing would just be about me. Um, what's going on in my personal hobby right now and my sort of, I guess, editorializing about things I see happening and what's going on. Um, it won't be anything really specific, but um, I'm more than happy to answer questions um, and talk about whatever you guys want to talk about too. I don't know if I'll do whole shows on it, but if you have a great idea for a show, then I'd be super excited to hear about it. So the third thing I'd like to do um, in this show is just do a little segment called On My Painting Table, because uh, that's something that I am really passionate about. I have this rule that seems to break people's minds and drive people crazy where I won't play with other people's miniatures um, or miniatures I haven't painted myself or unpainted miniatures. Uh, where did that come from? When I was a kid, before the internet, before I know it's a crazy time, I'm talking to you from the internet and this was when I was a kid. Uh, yeah, before the internet, uh, when I was a kid, what I conceived as miniature wargaming is what I could see in books and magazines. So the environment I came up with as a wargamer, I didn't even think you'd be allowed to play without painted miniatures because what I saw in pictures always is people playing on beautifully, you know, for the time, appointed tables with beautifully painted miniatures that they'd obviously painted. Um, and that was just what, that was what I thought you did. And it's just a hard habit to break over the last 26 years. Um, I don't get the same sort of experience out of playing with other people's miniatures or miniatures I haven't painted myself. I've done it a couple times. I did a battle report with Matt for Infinity a little while ago where I used the, um, the little bit of Nomad miniatures that the studio had painted. And it was just like, oh, I didn't feel anything. It was just awful. So um, just talking about what's going on on my painting table, I think would be something I'd like to do because one, it'll motivate me to paint. Um, I have a bunch of unbuilt and unpainted ogre stuff that I want to paint for the uh, Old World War series. Um, I have a ton of unpainted War Machine stuff. Like I'm painting unpainted War Machine stuff for days and days and days. And literally in the four years I was at a War Machine, there wasn't a whole lot of new stuff that came out. There was a lot of new Warcasters but miniature wise, except for like some stuff getting converted to plastic, there wasn't a lot of new stuff. So I've literally painted like a War Machine you know, mercenary army while filming the War Machine League um, without having to really buy anything. I still have tons of it I have to paint, have tons of pirate stuff I have to paint. Um, I might order a few things. I ordered a galleon and a bunch of the solos that I just didn't have um, and a couple of new Warcasters, so Drake McBain and Damiano, 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 I think his name is Steelhead Warcaster. I was excited about my mercenaries, that they were fun, um, that they were a cool war machine faction to just do because it would augment the factions I already had, my Kador and my Menoth. Um, and yeah, and so, so that's kind of what's been going on with me and it's good to motivate me to keep painting, to talk about it and hear about it. So here's what on my painting table right now. I have a Nomad. He's not quite done yet, but you can see him. He's, uh, there you go, base coated. I'm trying to get this in focus, there he is. He's an old metal nomad, which um, Chris actually has a couple of nomads that I put next to him and I realized how huge he is. He's, the metal nomad is way bigger than the new plastic um, mercenary jack. So I like him, I put him up on a sort of scenic base. Um, he's base coated and washed and I'll should get some highlights on him, get him finished. Uh, what else have I been painting? I've been painting some Infinity stuff, some Yu Ching. So I painted, uh, these were just kind of, I painted them for fun because I hadn't painted any of my Yu Ching stuff and I was going to play a game with Matt and then just to stop painting them. But I painted a Wu Ming um, with a boarding shotgun in a, sort of like a waspy sort of dark black and orange. And a Domaru Bute, I think it's pronounced, with a chain rifle. Or chain gun, yeah, a chain rifle. Um, the big template one. And again, he's done in sort of some white markings to denote the fact that he is. Uh, you know, shamed or crazy or whatever it is in his backstory. Um, and they're on some nice plastic deck painting bases that I bought while I was in California um, at Game Castle. Uh, if you are ever in California in the East Bay, go check out Game Castle. My buddy Seth runs Game Castle 3. It's in Fremont. It's a beautiful store. Um, he's got tons and tons of stuff there. And uh, yeah, go check it out because great series of stores. They have everything. There's literally nothing gaming related. I don't think the Game Castle doesn't carry. So if you're ever down there, check them out. I bought tons of stuff there when I was traveling into the bay. Um, and then last but not least, I just got a shipment from Chris Ju. 
I think it's pronounced. Uh, he's been on a bunch of, you've seen his area I know army probably tons during the learning uh, infinity bat reps. He's kind of a big wheel in the war machine leagues uh, down in Buffalo across the border from us here at Mini Wargaming. Um, and he plays a whole bunch of different armies, but I guess he bought a Toha army and he didn't want it. So he just shipped it to me and I have a huge box of Toha stuff that I now have to paint. Thanks for that, Chris. Here's my box of Toha stuff. Um, I actually didn't even look at what it was. I just, I hadn't painted. I didn't own any Toha stuff yet. I have tons of other infinity things, but for some reason I didn't have any Toha stuff. So I have a huge box of it now. I don't even know what's in here, um, but it's more than enough to make a huge army, I'm sure. And if Chris bought it, it's probably a pretty good army too, because um, he's a really good infinity player. So that's what's on my painting table right now. Um, I've got some mercenary stuff to finish up. I just finished painting my Cell Sword Warcaster for the War Machine narrative campaign. Um, which may or may not be out yet, but uh, his name is Jetty on the Blade, and I built his uh, Bodged Warjack cutter as well. The other guys, Chris and uh, Steve, finished painting their Warjacks, and we're just um, getting ready to get started in the league filming right now. So I don't know if this video will come out first or second, but we'll see. Um, and yeah, I got some Warhammer stuff I want to paint too, so that's what's on the painting table with Ash. All right, so that's the end of my show. Um, episode one of The Machine Shop with Ash. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it, guys. Um, it's been something I wanted to do for a while is just talk about wargaming. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you'll tune in again for episode two. I got some ideas already for what's going to be in that episode. I think I hinted to them earlier on. Um, but if you guys want to ask me questions, uh, I do want to do a question answer segment. Not really like Matt sit and talk, but I will definitely answer questions. Um, and uh, yeah, um, I'll see you in episode two. So thanks for watching. Uh, we'll see you next time. Until then, happy wargaming.